welcome back to our IB Physics video series. This is the second video in IB Physics Topic 2, Mechanics, where we will be looking at forces, free body diagrams, and Newton's laws. Forces are a fundamental concept in physics, defined as actions that cause deformation or change in velocity and acceleration of an object. They are measured in Newtons. The main types of force you'll encounter during IB physics are weight, which is the attractive force exerted by an object's mass on another object, electrostatic force, which is the attractive or repulsive force between two electrically charged objects, magnetic force, which is the attractive or repulsive force between two magnetic objects, reaction force, which is the force a surface perpendicularly exerts on another object due to its weight. This can also be referred to as the normal force. Friction, which is the force a surface parallel to another exerts to counteract the adjacent surface's motion. Compression, which is the force a spring, rod or object exerts in both directions on another object when it is squished. And tension, which is the force a spring, rope or cable exerts in both directions on another object when it is stretched. Forces are quite abstract concepts, so how are they represented in IB Physics questions? This is the role of free body diagrams. These visually represent objects and show all the forces acting upon them as arrows pointing in the direction that they are acting. The magnitude of the force is represented by the size of the arrow. For example, the object shown below is falling at terminal velocity, where the weight of the object is acting down and the drag force is acting up with equal magnitude. Note that weight is always drawn down from the center of an object. A more advanced free body diagram is of an applied force moving a block at a constant velocity. Here the weight of the box is acting down and the reaction force is acting up with equal magnitude. At the same time, the applied force is acting right on the box and dynamic friction is acting left with equal magnitude. But what determines how these forces interact with objects? Well, Isaac Newton came up with three basic principles that govern mechanics, called Newton's laws. Newton's first law states that a body remains at rest, or moving, with a constant velocity unless acted upon by an external unbalanced force. In other words, when all forces on an object are balanced and cancel out to zero, it remains in this state, termed equilibrium. If an object is at equilibrium, the sum of all forces on it equals zero. There are two types of equilibrium, static equilibrium and dynamic equilibrium. Static is a state of equilibrium wherein all forces on a stationary object are balanced. For example, a book lying on a table. Dynamic is a state of equilibrium wherein all forces on an object moving at a constant velocity are balanced. For example, a skydiver at terminal velocity. But what if an object is acted upon by an unbalanced force? Q. Newton's second law. Newton's second law states that the resultant force on an object is proportional to its acceleration. This can be mathematically expressed as force equals mass times acceleration. Note, there is a second better definition, which will be explored in the fifth IB Physics Topic 2 video. The main force used in mechanics is weight. Since this is the attractive force exerted by an object's mass on another object, the formula for weight is mass times gravity. Note, this is to be distinguished from mass, which is simply the amount of matter an object contains. The other main forces encountered in IB Physics mechanics are the reaction, tension, solid friction, and elastic forces. Remember that the reaction force is the force a surface perpendicularly exerts on an object due to its weight. As a result, on any flat surface, reaction force is always equal and opposite to the weight of the object. Tension acts very similarly. Since it is the force of a spring, rope, or cable exerting in both directions on another object when it is stretched, a rope suspending an object has a tension equal and opposite to the object's weight. Solid friction appears as two types, static friction and dynamic friction. 
Static friction is the force exerted by a surface on a stationary surface. The coefficient of static friction is a constant that describes the ratio of the maximum static friction force to the reaction force on the stationary surface. The formula for maximum static friction force is the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the reaction force. Dynamic friction is the force exerted by a surface on a moving surface. The coefficient of dynamic friction is a constant that describes the ratio of the maximum dynamic friction force to the reaction force on the moving surface. The formula for maximum dynamic frictional force is the coefficient of dynamic friction multiplied by the reaction force. The IB also expects you to understand how these two forces work. Imagine pushing a heavy box. It requires a large force to begin moving it. This is the force required to overcome static friction. But once the box is moving, the force required to move the box decreases. This is the transition of static friction to dynamic friction. Eventually, the box moves at a constant speed with minimal force. This is the force required to overcome dynamic friction. Typically, questions about this ask for the relationship between static and dynamic friction, or their coefficients. The relationship is thus that static friction is much greater than dynamic friction. The same relationship applies to their coefficients. Note, if a question states that a surface is smooth, it means that the surface does not exert friction on the object. The elastic force of a spring is a combination of the compression and tension forces it experiences. This is a special scenario that requires the force equals mass times acceleration formula to slightly change. This is because a spring is easier to compress at the start and harder at the end. So the force applied increases the shorter the spring becomes. This is also dependent on the stiffness of the spring, described by the spring constant K and measured in newtons per meter. Thus, the formula for elastic force of a spring is the spring constant K multiplied by the spring's extension delta X. Newton's first and second laws have described the properties of forces on individual objects. But how do two objects interact with one another? Well, Newton's third law covers this. Newton's third law states that when object A exerts a force on a second object B, object B exerts an equal and opposite force back on object A. This is colloquially phrased as, every action has an equal and opposite reaction, and can be mathematically expressed as the force of A on B equals negative force of B on A. However, an important requirement for this law is that the forces must be the same type of force. For example, when pushing the box, the pushing force exerted acts rightwards whereas the pushing force of the box on the person acts leftwards. At the same time, a solid friction of the ground on the box acts leftwards, and a solid friction of the box on the ground acts rightwards. You have now covered all of the content you need for forces, free body diagrams, and Newton's laws to get full marks in the exam. We hope you enjoyed the second video in our IB Physics Topic 2 video series. Check out our notes, flashcards and questions on our website to reinforce your understanding from this video.